Hey everybody! Welcome to How to Solve ArcLink Word Problems. Uh, we are going to live in this equation right here. Arc length is going to be equal to 2 pi times the radius times theta over 360, where theta is going to be the actual like amount of degrees or radians that we've gone around to calculate this arc. So we're going to see three examples. We're going to use clocks, we're going to use a robotic arm, and we're going to use a pleated fan, one that you kind of see down here in the corner. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to look at is a robotic arm. So a robotic arm pinned at one end makes a complete revolution in two minutes. Okay, that means it's pinned at one end. It makes a complete revolution in two minutes. So which means it goes all the way around here in two minutes. So two minutes for it to sweep all the way around. What is the angle swept out by the robotic arm in 1.5 minutes? Explain in both radians and degrees. Okay, well in two minutes we went 360 degrees. So how many did degrees did we traverse in one minute? We'll divide both sides by two. So every one minute we traversed 180 degrees. So if we go 1.5 minutes, so then how far did we go in 1.5 minutes? Well then we're going to multiply both sides here by 1.5 times 1.5 times 1.5 because then we'll get 1.5 minutes on the left equals how many degrees? Well, 80 times 1.5 is 270 degrees. So in 1.5 minutes then, we went 270 degrees. Okay, how do we express this in radians? Well, we can convert from degrees to radians by multiplying by pi over 180. So radians then would equal 270 times pi over 180. So this is equal to 270 pi over 180, which if you reduce, divide by 90, divide by 90, this would be 3 pi over 2. So in degrees, in 1.5 minutes, we went 270 degrees. In radians, we went 3 pi over 2 radians in 1.5 minutes. So let's go to our next example. Our next example is the fan. Here's where we're going to use our equation. 2 pi r times theta over 360. So that's our arc length formula. So let's see here. In the 1800s, women often carried pleated fans. One of the fans displayed at the Smithsonian is 7 inches long. So also in fans, if you can see by this picture here, fans, they have two sides and they're like this, and there's like a little hinge usually right here. So this is what was 7 inches long. So this 7 is going to provide us with our radius. So 2 pi times 7. So fans look like that and then when they're open the hinges here and they open like this. So this was 7 inches. This is 7 inches here. And then just like down here then they have this like beautiful pleat up here. Which my drawing looks nothing like that drawing. You should reference this picture instead because it's way better than what I just drew up here. Anyway, back to the fans. So when fully open, sweeps at an angle of 80 degrees. Okay, there's our theta. So all this times 80 over 360. Okay, how long is the trim? The trim is this piece here. This is the trim. So they're asking, see how this is an arc? They're asking, what's the length of this arc formed by this fan? So we plugged everything, and we plugged our theta, and we plugged our radius, and all we need to do now is compute. So trim equals 2 times 7 times pi times 80 over 360. This can all get shoved into a calculator times 80 divided by 369 points, what do we want, to the nearest tenth. So this would be 9.8 inches. 
So once you get your stuff plugged in, your calculator can do the rest of the work, especially if you have a nice fancy graphic calculator. Always work smarter, not harder. All right, our last example, we're going to do um, a decent amount of work on because this is a real thinky kind of example. So find the distance traversed by the tip of the minute hand on a clock between 5.12 p.m. and 6.27 p.m. on any given day. So we still need our arg length is equal to 2 pi r times theta over 3. 60. So what do we need? We need a radius and we need a theta. So the minute hand is 4 inches. So this is our minute hand here. So this is going to be our radius. So this is going to sweep around our, our circular clock face here. So our radius will be 4. Our radius is the length of the minute hand. So we'll sub a 4 in there. But we still need to figure out our theta. So what our clock is going to do, so it goes from 512, and we only care about the minute hand. We don't care about the hour hand. So 512, there's 10, 11, so 12 is about right here. 27, there's 25, 26. 27 is here. However, it doesn't just go from 512 to 527. It goes from 512 to 627, which means the minute hand is going to start here. It's going to go all the way around and then it's going to keep going until it hits here a second time. So it goes all the way around once. So it takes one turn. One turn in degrees would be 360 degrees. And then after it's one turn, how many minutes does it go? Well, how many minutes are between 12 and 27? Then it goes another 15 minutes. 15 minutes. How many degrees are in 15 minutes on a clock, well, we know the whole clock is 360, right? And we know there's 60 minutes, so which means every minute is 1 60th of 360 or 60 over 360, right? So every minute is worth 1 60th of the clock, and the whole clock is worth 360, which means every minute is worth 6 degrees. So 15 minutes then is 15 times 6. So we go one turn plus 15 minutes. So we're going to add these together. We're still trying to figure out, okay, well, how many degrees did we go? 360 times 15 plus 6, this is going to be 450. Degrees, degrees. Okay, so our theta is 450. 450 over 360. And again, we're going to use handy dandy calculator. So, what are we trying to figure out? Length of the minute hand, how long? So, distance. So, the distance our minute hand went is 2 pi times 4. 2 pi times 4 times 450 divided by 360. So this is 31.41 and we want it to the nearest inch. So 8 pi times 450 over 360 is 31.4 so we'll omit that inches because we're rounding to the nearest inch. Uh, okay, so again, all we did is we just used 2 pi r times theta over 360. We found our r because it was given to us, and in this particular problem, we had to find theta by being clever, by knowing there's 60 minutes in a clock, by knowing the clock face is 360 degrees, figuring out how many degrees in every single minute, and then calculating our degrees here. Then once we got our theta, we just plugged all this into our calculator, and we got our distance, so we did that that way. Okay. So just remember 2 pi r times theta over 360, 2 pi r times theta over 360, and you'll be good. So I hope this video helped you guys out. If you have any questions, as per usual, all you have to do is ask. I'll see you guys in the next video.